This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this week's episode, Jonathan is back, taking another look at the weaponry on offer in Escape from Tarkov. I'm regretting not picking up the um, the infamous emo emotional support. <laughs> Just go there. They're doing it to me again. I'm sorry, I'm struggling to concentrate because of how horrific this gun is. If you want to see more of Jonathan reacting to Escape from Tarkov's guns, make sure to subscribe and check out the previous videos we made on the game's extensive arsenal. And if you'd like to help out the Royal Armouries Museum and continue to support Jonathan's work, check out the links in the description of this video. Right, over to Jonathan. Um, so I'm looking at the, the Baikal M MP43 side-by-side -side shotgun. We have a couple of Baikal shotguns. We don't have this particular model. I notice as the as the, the model rotates on my screen, not unusual now to, to be able to see down the barrel and see the ammunition that's, that's chambered in the gun as modeled. It's always nice. In this case, I can actually see that we have a, the crimped end of a standard, presumably buckshot round. And then in the right-hand barrel, a slug. They have actually modeled as on not at all surprised to learn the actual ammunition that's then going to appear in, in the gun. So we've reached a pretty high degree of fidelity now with um, video game firearms, which is very nice. It's looking good. I, I very much like the fact, and this might be the first time I've seen it, modeled the lever for breaking the gun actually flicks to the side as the barrels are snapped shut as, as the action is snapped shut which is something that happens on all all side by side shotguns with a, with a top lever but i don't think i've ever seen it done before very satisfying sound as it as it snaps shut now for those of you wondering why the cartridge cases or the hulls or the shells don't go flying out of the gun in that pleasing fashion that we've become used to with, with game shotguns. That's because this specific model of the MP43 is not an ejector gun. If it was, it would have an E in its name. And it, this is just the 1C, which is a non-ejector gun. Now, uh, in reality, well, across the board actually, that means that when you break it open, the cartridge cases are extracted and they stick up proud so that you grab them and pull them out, but they're not thrown out of the gun. That's kind of a preference thing uh, or, or depending, you know, what sort of discipline of shooting that you're, you're doing. Some really nice modeling of the wooden stock, especially on this one. We've got some really good wear on that uh, sort of sculpted bit of the where, where the buttstock meets the, the action. I probably wouldn't be fooled if you showed me a picture of this and, you know, pretended it was a photograph of a real gun. But there are moments where I have to take a second look these days. So <laughs> we get in there. Now this is, um, I think this is a new one on me in video game term, well, Technically, it's a new one on me full stop because we we haven't got one of these. It's it's too too new. It's the Accuracy International AX, and it it's, follows the modern trend for precision rifles. It's a chassis rather than a stock. It's highly modular. You can change not just the cheek piece, but every aspect essentially is, is going to be adjustable for you. Uh, in this case, key mod accessory system on the front, very long rail across the top for you to fit a range of different optical sights. All of you, you know the drill by now. The action itself is a an improved version of the good old-fashioned, not that old-fashioned, um, nearly as old as me, um, <laughs> Accuracy International system. So, you know, nothing nothing drastic has changed there from the, the days of the L96 A1 uh, in terms of the user experience. Would you find this thing in this setting? I don't know. I think that depends very much on the in-game ecosystem or whatever you want to call it in terms of arms dealers and all of that. As in the real world, if you have the right contacts and you pay enough money, I'm sure you can get something as Gucci as this. Just gone and grabbed a, a second G36. I did. I did uh, grab another one. It's it's one I've featured before on this series, and it's a, a disappointingly semi-automatic <laughs> UK police carbine. The reason I've I've grabbed hold of it though is that this is the exact configuration, other than the trigger pack, that we're seeing here. Um, in other words, something of the traditional HK hooded front sight, and this particular variant of the flip up two position rear aperture as well. It's absolutely identical. There are several different configurations of rail available for the G36. Just so happens we have the exact same one. And it's really very nicely modeled. So if I 
hold the stock up to match what I'm seeing there. I can literally hold this thing up to the screen and look at every point of reference and it's spot on. It's very rare to be able to do that. G36, a really, really solid design, much maligned in the last few years, in my view, completely unjustified, but <laughs> there we go. Oh, a bit of a G36 vest this time. Here's another one. And this is the, the model that I'm looking at at the moment, the K. Um, K for Kurtz, not, not carbine in this case. Uh, Kurtz being German for short. And it is substantially shorter than the full, I think, 20 inch barrel original rifle. To the point where you, you are losing a bit of effectiveness from the 5.56 cartridge, but it was intended for specialist troops. Uh, so this is exactly as we see in the game. This one's in, in very good condition, except for this sort of piggyback optical sight. So this is the, the standard Bundeswehr configuration as originally introduced to the German army. All we're seeing that's different in the game is that the red dot sight is not fitted. And if I were to remove that, you would see exactly what we see here. So this, although it seems to sit very, very deep on the rail, it doesn't sit that deeply. Um, it wouldn't be able to because that's the actual optical sight below. So if you take this off, you get exactly the same faceted kind of roof-like shape and the um, iron, or in this case polymer, <laughs> backup sights are exposed. You get the, the ability to use these very basic pistol style combat sights molded into the carrying handle, which is what we see here. This is the, the Milcor M32 grenade launcher, 40 millimeter grenade launcher. It's not, I suppose, super widely encountered, but there are quite a few out there. As a grenade launcher, it does fire in quite quite the arc, but that's a that's positive advantage when you're trying to lob in explosives. You, you don't necessarily want to fire straight and level anyway. Um, this looks to be very well modeled indeed, including what looks to be all the functionality that you would expect. In other words, being able to open it up um, rotate the drum to a different position even, selectively load different types of ammunition into your drum. Having having never fired one, but having seen some footage, the it looks, it looks to be realistically modeled. The grenade launchers in games vary pretty wildly in how closely they model the actual arc of a 40 millimeter grenade. This looks to be right. The size of the explosion looks to be right. Yeah, I, I, I would expect no less, to be honest. <laughs> I suppose that isn't wildly different from the hilarious noob tube of Call of Duty close range use of grenade launcher thing where correctly uh, the, the round doesn't arm at that short distance, uh, it arms through rotation. Uh, it's a safety thing, you don't want the thing going off near you. The question is, I think I've seen somebody try to replicate this with a, like a gelatin torso or something is what what would be the damage to the human body at that close range from this low velocity but relatively heavy projectile i'm not going to say whether this is right or wrong except to say that i think if it impacted in the backpack like that it might not just go down dead immediately I, i'm all right speculating too much it is essentially a blunt trauma weapon uh, inside the arming distance We have quite an amusing dropping of four grenade rounds there. And the way they sort of gently roll off into the distance for some reason has, has tickled me quite a bit. I assume you can pick them back up again. You definitely want to dust them off if you do that. Uh, now, in reality, there'd be a, a small risk there of damaging something by dropping them that would negatively affect their performance. Not advisable to reuse dropped rounds of any kind, really unless you're really in a pinch, or in this case, you don't want to waste some quite expensive ammunition. It's a really interesting gameplay there with impacts on a hard surface from the grenade and the person nearby is taken out. More so than I think would be the case in your typical shooter. That, that seems to work on a blast radius thing. This appears to be modeling fragmentation. If you're within like a meter or two meters of, of that exploit, of the edge of that, the visible edge of that fireball, effectively, you've still got some sharp bits of metal 
cutting through you and that's modeled. So you can take, you can clearly take advantage of that in the game by deliberately aiming at a hard surface to get that um, explosion, that fragmentation and take somebody out. I'm regretting not picking up the um, the infamous emo emotional support <laughs> Sturmgewehr. Uh, they're doing it to me again. <laughs> As the title of the, of the weapon says, this is the PP-19 Vichyas, uh, which is the mp 5 version of the uh, earlier Bison submachine gun. Uh, sorry, I'm struggling to concentrate because of how horrific this gun is, <laughs> but you get the idea. So the, the complicated helical magazine of the, of the Bison was, um, I think, just too complicated and not reliable enough. They reverted to a straightforward magazine well, straight in, straight out, with a paddle release. Not unlike the MP5. Uh, so in terms of capability, pretty similar to the, to the MP5. I think it's fair to say not as refined. And then there's this thing, which has been done purely to vex me. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got like a, oh, I don't even know what that is. It's like a vaguely PSG1 stock on it. I'm sure that's a, that's that's a, an actual type of stock that I don't I don't know. It's got everything under the sun attached to it. Even the magazine, the magazine, vertical grip, and the lower handguard are all different colours that kind of clash with each other. <laughs> we've got the top cover missing just for giggles. I think. I mean, I suppose as, uh, as cursed guns go, it's pretty functional. There's, no, there's nothing that's going to stop this from working. It's just that that buttstock is intended for precision fire. It's not going to help you at all with this thing, other than to add a bit of weight, probably. In fact, you know what? The more I think about it, the less insane this actually is. It just looks horrific. So although, although it's fun to be able to selectively manipulate different controls on these on these guns, there is a purpose to it. So we have jams or stoppages modeled in the game. We've just seen one occur there. And the ability to press a button to operate the bolt when you otherwise wouldn't need to is of course essential for clearing stoppage. Very few games model stoppages at all, really. It interrupts the, the flow of gameplay, but for a sort of tense, tactical, quite realistic, shooter like this it, it, yeah, it makes a lot of sense when the gun goes click it's panic time you want to seek cover and do your do your immediate actions um, and we've, we've cleared the stoppage we have blind blind fire has been a thing in, in games for a while third person shooters in particular where you just stick your gun over the top of cover and, and let let rip the way it's modeled in this game i think is is really good though because yeah okay a, a trained soldier probably shouldn't be putting their gun around the corner and, and firing it unsighted but a lot of other users of firearms will do that because they don't want to expose themselves to fire and it adds to the sense that this is a real weapon in the game it's not just bullets coming out of your forehead effectively which is what your traditional shooter the gun is just a, a layer in front of you and the bullets are emerging from your forehead something like this you've got a range of different controls to manipulate you got the ability to lean, to go prone and fire, fire in the prone, to put the gun around cover and fire, and you just get the sense of a fully realized weapon. Yep. Papa Shah 41, or PPSH if you prefer not to uh, attempt the Russian pronunciation, is of course a very old design by modern standards. But in terms of World War II legacy firearms that are out there, there are still a lot of these out there. And it's probably, I might be going out, out on a limb here, but probably the most common of those legacy firearms that's still in use and one of the more effective ones as well. I don't necessarily think you'd be running it with the drum magazine. I've got one here for the speed stupendously cool 71 dr uh, round drum mag. They're unlikely to be in, well, harder to find in, in fully functioning working order, harder to, to look after. So I think you're more likely to encounter this thing. If anyone's trying to use it seriously today, they're gonna to be using the uh, 32 round box magazine. And we've got another, another gun here fitted with that. Um, I haven't tried interchanging the magazines on these 
by the way, but quite frequently they don't. That's the other issue with these. Um, not really with the, the another reason to, to run the box magazines because the drums are not interchangeable for the most part. They were fitted to the guns at the factory and they were issued uh, from variety with two drums. And if you could find another one and file it to fit, great. But otherwise you were stuck with your two drums and you'd have to go and hide somewhere and bomb them back up again, which is <laughs> a time consuming operation. Admittedly, you get 71 rounds out of it, which is fantastic. But there are many solid reasons why they moved away from the drum. Um, not criticism, because with enough practice, it's perfectly doable, but the reload is quite slick. And in reality, it's a little awkward. You've got to flip down the, the magazine catch lever, push that forward. And <laughs> as you can see, not quite as slick, at least for me, with my lack of training and this particular gun and mag. But you know, if you if you fettled your gun and magazine and you had more practice than I have, it would be easier. But this is a this is quite a tight fit. Now, this is probably not it is indeed not matched to the gun. So that's <laughs> that's almost certainly the main reason why that is not coming off and going on very easily. But hey, at least it fits the gun and it would operate in the gun. Okay, this is pretty cool. This is the sort of thing I'd expect to see in Tarkov because it's a modern or modernized take on an old favorite. The RPK-16, which is a, a sort of product improved RPK-74, which is the 5.45 millimeter version of the original RPK. Now here it's a sort of, uh, I'll use this term advisedly, heavy assault rifle, <laughs> problematic in a number of ways. Um, assault rifles, increasingly useless term, to be quite honest with you anyway, and calling it a heavy assault. I, I regret saying that immediately, but hey, it, <laughs> you see what I mean. It's heavy barrel, it's got a compensator, a uh, big old drum mag. It's got the reinforced receiver of an RPK anyway, and we've got that, that angle side mounted foregrip, which is designed to carry the, the player's arm clear of the drum mag, which does make some sense. If you need a lot of firepower at close range, one of these sort of um, assault machine guns, it's probably the, a slightly better term, is an option that is being used. But it's, it's a nice, nice looking gun, I think. Um, let's see how it performs. Probably worth noting, we've, we've actually got a, a Western Western um, optical sight fitted here. So that's the, the, the Hammer, H-A-M-R, is a loopholed optic. Uh, and why not? Um, all the, the current generation of Russian and other um, AK family weapons have Picatinny rails. So you, you can mount, if your unit permits, essentially anything you like to them. So why not have that combination? Uh, that is incidentally probably the, the main feature of the RPK-16 over previous variants is a somewhat solid Picatinny rail top cover. The, the weapon is derived or developed in parallel to the AK-400 slash AK-12. It's the LMG variant effectively of the AK-12. Those were more guns from the excellent Tarkov. If you'd like to support us here at the Royal Armouries Museum, um, the best way to do that is to visit us if you possibly can. We've got some events going on this summer. Also worth mentioning, I think, um, the journal that I'm associate editor of, the RMAX journal, that's the journal of the Cody Firearms Museum, who are good friends of ours as well, has a new issue out. It's a second issue from the revived run. Please do check that out. It is paid for, but I like to think it's worth it. So, um, otherwise guys, we'll see you again next time.